Hi everybody, this is Alex Deploy and today we're going to be talking about seven great simple and easy ways to find turning points in the Forex market. This is a video one in this particular series and we're going to be covering the introduction in this video. Okay, in this video we're going to do a brief introduction then look at what moves the market what trading considerations should be taken into consideration when trading turning points and why we should actually be trading turning points and we'll have a brief look at the challenges with turning points and then uh, in the future videos we'll move on to the actual techniques to remind you that uh, the simple and easy series consists of about 20 modules and uh, we cover specific topics in these uh, this particular series in this particular module therefore this module is not a standalone module uh, we do not go into detail regarding the placement of stops the uh, way of exiting transactions these are all covered in uh, other uh, other modules in this particular st series. In this series we're going to look specifically at finding and we'll look at basic techniques to trade these particular turning points. Just a reminder that when we talk about turning points we are talking about uh, retracements, retractments, bounce trades and turning point trading. They're all synonymous to turning point trading. Okay, let's look at what moves the market. Market is moved basically by buy and sell orders flowing into the market. It's as simple as that. Market cannot move unless a buy or sell order is entered into the market. We would therefore have to become expert at understanding how the market responds to these buy and sell orders. There are essentially four groups of uh, orders. Uh, the first group is uh, the uh, group of orders that are introduced by the big forex market particip participants. This group consists of big players in the market who have the ability to move the market. And uh, they can introduce orders that can move the market 30 to 50 pips for no apparent reason. Often you are in a trade, the trade is moving beautifully, it's not near any support or resistance level uh, there's no announcement happening and suddenly the trade stops and reverses very sharply what has happened it's one of these big players ha that have intervened and said oh, I don't like the direction of this move and has introduced orders to reverse the uh, direction of the move this happens as much as six to seven times a day and explains why in spite of following your trading plan to the letter your some of your deals might have gone bad the second group of orders are uh, orders based on market behavior which are, are essentially again based on support and resistance these are orders placed participants in the market based on technical analysis methodologies and mainly based on support and resistance price levels these orders are placed at strategic price levels and act as entry orders or stop orders. And these orders accumulate around these support and resistance levels. This explains why when certain price levels are reached, there's a big move in the market and all, as all these orders are activated at the same time. That is why it's quite good to be competent at identifying key support and resistance levels. This can be do, done using horizontal and non-horizontal support principles. Then we have the third group of orders which are based on fear and greed and these essentially happen when new economic announcements are made or news enters the market. The market becomes fearful or greedy as a result of the uh, new information and the market can sometimes move uh, hundreds of pips due to new information entering the market. A good example of this is the uh, monthly payroll announcements in the in the US which has the ability to move the market over 100 pips in two to three minutes then the fourth group of orders are based on normal commercial and investment activities these orders are processed by financial institution and based on the actual need to buy and sell currencies in order to set settle commercial 
trade transactions or investment movements within the market. These are, uh, are, are normal activities and occur more or less at the open of financial markets or at the close of the financial markets. Right, so now that we understand a little bit about what moves the market, why should we try and spot and trade turning points? Firstly, as you can as you will see later on, they're not that difficult to spot and or anticipate. They have a really good risk return ratio because as you enter these transactions, they're either going to be successful or not. You don't need huge stops when you trade these transactions. The most important reason is that the best traders in the world trade retracement trades. Uh, and the book does give you a couple of examples of that. Uh, there are two clear ones, but uh, in my personal experience, I found that most traders that trade retracement trades are the most consistent due to the risk return ratio being in their favor. They're not the most successful traders, but they are the most profitable ones. The other reason for trading this method is it's the only way to catch between 95% and 100% of a trend. If you think about it, most uh, if you think about it, most trend following transactions need about a 20% reversal in trend to confirm that a reversal has taken place and many traders only trade at that point once the conversion is made. On the exit side, a lot of traders only exit once they are are sure that the trend is over and sometimes that also takes uh, up to 25% of the trend re trend to reverse before they can make that decision. And here's an example of uh, uh, channel trading allowing us to capture up to 95% of uh, currencies moved. As you can see uh, this channel is, a, is an established channel and you can see the bounce areas are highly predictable areas um, and you can actually place pending orders at the anticipated bouncing uh, bounce points and sometimes you can actually catch the bounce almost to the pip as, as that example there that bounce happened almost to the pip and that one there. So th so th uh, channel trading is just one example of ways of finding turning points in the market where you can get up to 95% of the trend. Some general points on trading turning points. Uh, firstly, you need to take your spread into account in all buy transactions because of the fact that we do identify the turning points right to the pip you need to be very accurate when entering buy transactions secondly there are two approaches to trading turning points the one approach is to try and catch the turning point as it's happening right on the pip and the other approach is to t try and catch it when the turning point has been confirmed and you'll see some of the, of the techniques that we use use both those methods for instance a candlestick trading uh, requires for a con uh, requires a confirmation before you can trade so a little bit of the uh, uh, bounces already occurred by the time you trade uh, some other techniques like channel trading and volume trading you can actually catch the turn to the pip or pretty close right so let's uh, then briefly look at the challenges of trading turning points firstly uh, there's a psychological uh, uh, challenge in that uh, it is a scary way to trade you are trading directly in into uh, a trend sometimes that is moving pretty fast so there's a scary element there and a lot of people uh, cannot take the uh, suspense or the the, the risk and that the a lot of people cannot take the suspense or the probable risk of trading directly into a fast moving trend. Also it takes a bit of a paradigm shift if you have been a with the trend trader uh, it, it does take a bit of a while to change your mental approach to one from uh, of being a bounce trader rather than a breakout trader. And these uh, transactions as with all trading systems the, you do have failures and and the biggest uh, fear to overcome which is a general fear is the fear of failure forex traders really battle with that and uh, this particular approach sometimes has a very low success rate sometimes 40% uh, and but traders make a huge amount of money because of course they make 
two to three times more on their winners than they lose on their losers uh, they are happy and they make money but a lot of people psychologically cannot trade with an, a trading system with a low success rate then the concept goes against the generally accepted sacred cow forex trading and training concepts it's so much easier to train people on a trend following basis than to train them on a bounce trade basis it takes a little bit more skill and therefore you'll find a lot of trading courses do follow the with the trend approach um, as it is easier to for, easier to teach but this approach also requires a good trading skills you need to be uh, some of these trading approaches you need to have really good trading skills in entering market orders identifying potential price formations entering within 40 seconds of major spikes identifying reversal candles as they are forming identifying support and resistance and placing stops where profit this requires experience and skill and sometimes it, it, it takes a while to develop this but like uh, riding a bicycle once you have it you can trade quite comfortably okay let's move on to a look at the seven techniques to identify and trade turning points in the market we'll move on to video two